Hello YouTubes, this is Grimweird coming back at you with more Enigmatica 2 Expert Mod Pack playthrough action for Minecraft 1.12.2. As always, we are joined by our lovely assistant, Zombie Steve. And this is going to be my reactor room. So I got sick of the uh, very utilitarian gray stone bricks. So I get a little weird here. Um, I had some of these as a chest reward, these factory block grinder things, and the coloring of them sort of reminded me of this sort of greenish in the fusion core. So I thought I would just throw up weird patterns on the walls. It looks a little, a little silly. Uh, it reminds me of bad 1970s science fiction. Um, but uh, I do sort of like the uh, laboratory block tiles that I did. So this is eight stone and another quartz gets you laboratory blocks. And then I chiseled it into the stone pattern. Um, this is another chisel of it, the vents. That is another chisel of it, fuzzy screen. Um, I'm also using enlightened fused quartz in the floor to give us some lighting. Um, and that's turned out looking okay. Same thing in the ceiling some fused quartz in there to sort of give us some light. And as always, I have my ever-present um, yellow wisps from the um, Astral Sorcery Cave Illuminator. Um, but yeah, no, no torches at all in the room, so I like that. I get sick of torches almost as much as I get sick of graystone bricks. Yeah, I'm talking about you guys. So I've got the fusion core in place. That's cool. I've got the um, connectors. Uh, these are placeholders for where my uh, rings will be. So there will be a big square of an inside ring of, you know, 40 stone or, you know, 40 um, electromagnets. And then these will be two rings of 48 and a ring of 56 for a total of 192 um, electromagnets coming around the edge. And that's why I'm talking to you now, because I've got 600 uh, copper plates being made, auto-crafted, uh, to uh, make all of that. So I thought now would be a good time to uh, show you the progress. So it turns out that um, it's the bottom middle block of this, which is the business end. So um, you can definitely access it from below. So I wanted to give myself room. So I've got it up in the air. That lets me sort of, you know, if I need to place cooling units for active cooling, I'm sort of at height here where I can do that. And I can put machines here to feed into that. So I raised it up above ground level by one. I got a nice high ceiling in the room um, so that I have area to do stuff on top of it too. Um, so things are looking good here. Um, the wall is a bit too busy. I might uh, take out the factory blocks. Um, that was just sort of a whim. But, um, yeah, almost ready to uh, put this sucker together. So I'm going to go make 192 <laughs> electromagnets to form the uh, toroid around this. And I will be back when it's uh, ready to roll. All right, so we have a delay, as we often do. So I'm making my 192 magnets. That turns out to each of these bad boys, I'm making the transparent fusion electromagnets, each of those 192 is going to take four advanced plating. So that's close to 800 advanced plating. Um, and each um, advanced plating takes um, four tough al alloys. So that's like 3,200 tough alloy. Uh, that's a lot of tough alloy. Uh, and it requires lithium dust, which uh, lithium comes from um, super veins. And I have found two or three super veins, but I do not quite have enough lithium. I'm like 50 lithium short of uh, making my things. But that gives me an excuse finally to um, use the scanner. So we, if we go to the book, um, even just in getting started, it talks about scanning. 
um, and it's pretty common to get one of these as a reward. They're not too hard to make recipe wise. Um, there's a slight chance per chunk that a super ore vein generates. There are six different types. Nuclear craft ores only spawn in super veins. Blah, blah, blah. Um, so I hadn't really used it, but let's take a look at it. So it is a scanner, and the uh, name of the mod is Scannable. And I hadn't really used it before, but apparently it needs cards. So if we take a look at, at the Scannable... You've got a scanner and then you've got all these cards so the blank cards are some green dye which i usually get from cactus you can put cactus in a furnace and some other stuff so that's pretty easy to make and the one that i'm really interested in so there's a rare ores one which probably would work but since i already have some lithium i was interested in the block scanner module block use on a block to configure the module so uh, that and it only costs 150 energy to use it as opposed to 1000 to do for um, rare things so since I already had a lithium I made a block one and two range ones um, if we take a look here if you shift right click you can open up the interface and it will hold three at a time so I've made a scanner module for block and two ranged ones. And uh, so now I've got a combined energy cost of 150, 250, 350. And it holds 25,000. So it took me a minute to figure out how to scan this. But before you put the scanner module block in, holding the card in your hand, not the scanner, but the actual card, you can shift right click on the type of block you're looking for and then if you scan over the module you'll see configured block equals lithium ore so I was put it in as a blank and then was trying to figure out how to configure it while it was in the scanner and it wasn't working but that's the key you uh, have to configure the module outside of the scanner and then put it in the scanner so I did that, and um, I right-click hold, charging, boom, it lit up, and I started to turn, and boom, there we go. So there's a huge super vein off that direction. So that's what we're going to go look for. And that ought to take care of my uh, lithium needs. So let's go hunting. Now we're down at bedrock level where the super veins tend to be. Let's look around again for it. So it's off in that direction. Um, trying to think how to get over there. There's a bunch of water over there. We did find one super vein there. Looks like there's another one even closer in here. Let me go up a level to where that pathway is that heads in that direction. So where is that? That's this direction. Is that here? Yeah, it's here. I closed it off. But here it be. So now we should be able to triangulate on that bad boy a bit. Zap it again. There she goes. So it is basically right off there. Um, but it's down a little ways. Let's just dig down from here. see what we see I should still be under the effects of my cave illuminator I think 
Oh yeah. Give me some light. Don't make me use torches. Like some sort of non-magical plebe. Fine, I'll use a torch. Can't see where the hell I'm going. Let's hit the scanner again, make sure we're still on the right path. Oh yeah, no need to go lower. Oops, so... Let's just start digging here, and there we go. Lithium. So that worked just like we knew what we were doing. Amazing. There's a bunch of water around me, I can't... It looks like it's above me. There's also some sort of dungeon. Um, that looks like your standard mining cart, railway kind of dungeon. It's also above me. The reason I'm curious is I generally like to, on these guys, um, just vein mine all the normal stone around the, uh, the super vein uh, just to open it all up but I don't necessarily want to drown myself but let's just give it a shot we'll just uh, start tearing into things hopefully the water is far enough oh it's dripping it's dripping on me so that was close All right, maybe I'll try to remain calm and not bring down the Great Flood. Hey, there's some... There's some Astral Sorcery Cave Illuminator kicking in. All right, you guys don't want to watch me do this, but... I did think, since this is the first time I've used the scanner, that it might be cool to take a look at how that worked. And it worked just fine, thank you very much. Let's see if I hit that. Yes. That gave me some room without bringing down the flood. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to continue to make this uh, while I've been... Whoa! Oh, I am hungry. Uh, while I've been uh, crafting the 192 electromagnets, I've also made five reinforced large drums, which I hope I can use. I think they hold about 4,000 buckets, so I want to use those for both a uh, deuterium buffer and also to collect the fusion products out of the uh, fusion reaction. We'll be making tritium and helium and... Um, Neutronium fluid or something like that. Neutron fluid, something like that. And I think one other thing. So I might as well collect that stuff. And I've made some fluid conduits, Ender IO fluid conduits. conduits. Um, I also still have to make some pumps. I'm not finding a good answer for, you know, how much fuel. After the melon debacle, where I made the ability to create vast amounts of melons, thinking that I needed to to run my uh, ethylene-consuming uh, advanced generator, I don't want to make 8,000 mechanism pumps and set up some huge deuter deuterium plant only to find out that four pumps and an electrolytic separator is all I need. So I'm trying to get a search around the internets, trying to get a feel for roughly how many uh, pumps are necessary to keep up with a fusion reactor. But I haven't found that answer quite yet. So 
so I got to make some pumps and get some deuterium started. So it's going to be lots of stuff to do. It's going to take me probably a little bit of time to get all this going. But the good news is, is that I have new lithium now. And if I look around, I can now get quite a bead on that. That looks like another good one way over there. Can't be too far away. So we are in business, and I'm now in love with the scanner. I ignored it for like, you know, ever, because I didn't have a way to charge it. Uh, but now that I have a way to charge it, and now that I've looked it up, and now that I've tried it, I am a fan. Yay, scanner. So we are back in business, so I'm going to get back to the crafting and the crying and the making new plans when I realize I can't make 3,200 or however many goddamn tough alloy because <laughs> I don't have enough lithium. Um, so I'm going to get back to that madness. I don't think anything has changed upstairs. Nope. Alright, so I'm going to get back to it. How much tough alloy do I have now? Oh, none, because I've been consuming it all. How much advanced plating do I have? 749. And I think I need a bare minimum of around 760 or so. So I was real close, real close. But now how much uh, lithium do I have? 81. Double it, that's 160. We are good to go. All right. We'll get that moving. Pick this up. But yeah, uh, I'm psyched about this scanner. Uh, makes me want to play with other things. So I've got two ranges already. You can put animals in it. And I think when you put animals and you mouse over them, it'll mouse over the glowing dots. It'll tell you what they are, maybe, maybe not. Uh, monsters. You can have like only one range in there and do both animals and monsters. You can do common ores, rare ores, specify a block. I assume I can reassign that by scanning on a different block. I want to double check that real quick, real quick though. So shift right click the open this. And then let's say we want to change it to, I wonder if you can do like a machine or something. Not that I would ever lose a machine. <laughs> Let's do something weird, like an elevator. Did it take it? Rotating elevator. Shift, right click, put it back in. Hey, look at that. It's my elevators. That is super cool. Um, yeah, I love it. What else did it do again? Let's see. Structures. Ooh. I wonder if this will help me find a uh, stage five underground dragon lair. That's something I want to do. Um, fluids. I wonder if you can scan for a particular fluid. Like, let's say you wanted blazing pyrothium. I wonder if you could scan that and find more of it. It's pretty common in the nether, but I'm just trying to think what else I might do with this. Use on an entity to configure the module. Huh, so you could maybe do Enderman if you're out searching for Ender Pearls. You could scan for Endermen and go after them. They move, they teleport around so much, that might be a pain. I wonder if you could scan a, like, a stage 3 dragon above ground 
and then hunt for a stage five one underground. Huh. The possibilities. So yeah, I'm gonna have to play more with this beast. I like it. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna get back to uh, crafting now. I got some more lithium cooking. I've almost got enough to finish the um, basically almost got the crafting bits necessary to build the ring structure around here. The big old four-part ring. Um, so then I have to worry about, I'm hoping that these uh, reinforced large drums will work. I assume that an inder uh, fluid um, conduits will pump in and out of them. Um, so that just leaves I also made some portable tanks just in case um, I can if you I can easily take them up to signal them and then I can probably get holding four on all of them and signal them with holding four will get up to about 960 buckets these guys are uh, like 4,000 and some buckets so I'd rather use the drums um, but I could get these portable tanks jacked up to a pretty nice level if I need to. Um, so uh, what else am I doing? Uh, I gotta get deuterium started. I'd like to get a big old drum of deuterium uh, generated before I even finish all the rest of this stuff. So I need to um, go ahead and do some study to try and figure out how many pumps I'm going to need. Um, I googled it real quick and I saw one YouTuber and he made like, I don't know, a whole crap ton of um, pumps. But I don't know if that was him being overkill like me and my melons, or if you really need that much to get enough heavy water to make deuterium. And I also googled it and I think the uh, Aiden, the guy who uh, made mechanism said it takes four pumps to keep an electric electrolytic separator busy um, but what I don't know does does that mean I need like you know eight cells of four pumps an electrolytic an, an electrolytic separator um, and you know s multiple cells of those five machines to feed a fusion generator a fusion generator I don't know so I'm going to keep looking and see if I can find some answers before I get too carried away. And if I can't in the next like 10-15 minutes, I'll just start out with four pumps and one electrolytic separator. And we'll see what kind of rate of deuterium we can make. Um, and then we'll just take it from there. Anyway, that's I've probably been babbling quite some time now. So uh, that might be this episode. Uh, sort of a boring one. We got to see the room where I will have an exciting piece of equipment soon. And we got to play with the uh, scanner, which was sort of cool. Um, but uh, hopefully we'll make it further next episode. Bye for now. Alright, looks like we still have some more time. So let's go ahead. I've made my 192, which if I've counted right, which is always a dicey proposition. Um, that should be enough to uh, install our rings. Um, also, I made a second one of these uh, scanner modules, and I've already broken on my draconium, but I made a second one to remind myself that I want to um, that I want to uh, have a card for draconium and just keep that on hand. But anyhow, let's see. So I'm thinking, I'm just going to be doing something like this. Not 100% sure what I'm doing here, but the idea is that basically if you look at this cross section, it's kind of a donut. So you're going to have uh, some plasma or whatever they want to call it 
cruising through the center of this. I'm just using the stones as sort of a guidepost for this. Oops. Dang it, now I'll have to go get that out of my inventory, but it's all right. transparent it makes it a little hard to see probably should have mixed and matched a bit but you know hey it's cool when it lights up it will probably look cool I'm getting sleepy so I uh, I uh, did some Googling while I was waiting for crafting, auto crafting to complete, and I think probably what I'm going to do for deuterium is set up maybe um, eight pumps and two electrolytic um, separators for deuterium and see how far that gets me. Uh, making eight instead of four uh, might as well, I'd rather make eight at once than four twice uh, that being said I don't want to make like 32 of them if I'm only going to need like you know four or eight, four or eight. Uh, did I get everything I guess it'll be obvious once I try to power it up if I'm missing a spot. Let's start at the bottom this time. Sorry if I'm a little quiet. I'm starting to get sleepy. It's bedtime. But I wanted to get this done before I went to bed. Did I get it at all? Okay, so I gotta remove these. Fill these in. It's starting to look like a serious piece of machinery. This thing better uh, generate a lot of power though. Because it took a decent amount of crafting. Just the sheer volume of copper um, I went through. And lithium and boron. Fortunately, I did a good share of it auto crafting, but it still took a lot of time. Oh, one more section here. Doink. Doink. And I'll have to go back and get the other two, but that's wonderful. It means I counted right. So I had two open spots left. 
and I had to break to Bueno. Too tired to fly straight. Let's see. <laughs> Okay, there's one, and there's one. Alrighty, I think we have ourselves a toroid, or a reasonable facsimile thereof in Minecraft terms. Beautiful. So the next step is I gotta get. Uh, this isn't gonna do me a damn bit of good if I don't have deuterium to put in it. Um, fusion reactor, E magnets not powered. Energy power, temp efficiency. Oh, it shows you the recipes. We're gonna be doing. Um, mechanism deuterium. It's flashing all over the place. I think this is the one we're going to be doing uh, with both chambers being the red liquid deuterium. Uh, and so we will get out neutron fluid, helium-3, tritium, and hydrogen. And I believe those are all liquids. It doesn't really say. It does say millibuckets, um, but it's hard to tell sometimes whether it's a gas or a liquid, but I assume that um, those are liquids. So I've got a big reinforced drum to stockpile deuterium ahead of this, and then four for the four outputs, hydrogen, tritium, helium-3, and neutron fluid. And I got some inter fluid conduits um, where am I going to put the drums? I might just output them to underneath here. Um, we're going to do some active cooling. I have to decide. We'll have to see how much it needs. You can have a lot of active cooling blocks and then put something cheap in them like water. Or you can have fewer blocks and then put in something that works better like gelid cryothium. Um, but I'm not sure how fast it burns. Uh, water would definitely be supremely more easy because all you got to do is like hook up a couple sinks probably. Um, the act of cooling you basically slap it up against these, uh, this outside ring um, and they get benefits if they are cattywampus from each other. So in other words if I put some you know right here on the top of the outmost ring and then two over from center and then I come over here and go to the bottom of that ring two over from the center then both of those would be uh, more effective. So basically you can put like a bunch um, a bunch of those bad boys on there fill them all with water and get the cooling in place. Um, but again, I don't know how hot it's going to get, and I don't know uh, how much cooling I'm going to need. And I don't know the rate at which it eats up water or cryothium, so we might have to just tinker. I might start with water, and then if I feel like it's not getting the job done, move to cryothium. Uh, I do have that Ender IO powered spawner with a blizz in it, so I could set up a little room where I just make all of the uh, make all the blizz rods that I need for all the cryothium that I need. So let's just see how much I've got. Just from running it a little while, I have 8,500 blizz rods. So yeah, cryothium shouldn't be a problem. So I'm probably more worried about the uh, other the other um, components. So let's see. 
Cryothium dust. Snowballs. Do I have snowballs? I think Blizz has also dropped snowballs. Yes, I have 8,800 snowballs. So, basically all I'd really be worried about is redstone at that point. But I'd have to set up some automation that pulls in, that uh, busts up the Blizz rods and combines to make the um, cryothium dust and then probably magma crucibles it. Um, so I'd have to set up a whole thing, whereas it might be simpler just to uh, make a bunch of the active cooling these guys what do they take only basic plating uh, yes yeah, so that's not bad so if I had to make like 40 of these and keep them filled with water it wouldn't be a big deal so we'll see okay now I'm babbling and uh, I'm sleepy and it's bedtime um, what else is there to talk about? I made this time in a bottle a long time ago, uh, based on a lot of recommendations, but I haven't really had a chance to use it much. Just out of curiosity, I clicked it on my cobblestone generator here. Now, a good share of the cobblestones coming from these, uh, these, uh, transfer nodes back there, but some of it's coming from the compact one. And so if I'm going up 79, 80, 81, 1, 2. So am I just really tired or are the little, uh, the little symbols on the front of the drawer swaying back and forth when I do this. I noticed that before, but I thought I was just tired, but I think it's really doing it. I think the little uh, symbols are swaying back and forth when I speed this up. I don't know that it's going that much faster, but oh well. We're getting there though. We have, um, for our deep dark access, we have, if we search for sex, we have two sexy sextuple compressed cobblestones. We need two more. We need to get that, uh, let's see, four. We need uh, 13 more of the quintuples to make the two sextuples. So what I might do is I might go AFK and go to bed and see if this runs overnight. And uh, I don't think my nutrition will do anything if I just sit here. The other thing, uh, <laughs> while I've been f fitzing around with all of this, I noticed last time I was down here I'm up to 1,500 uh, Chironite. So I've got probably way more than enough. I think I've probably even got enough tin. Um... Yeah, I've got lots of tin too, so I've probably got um, enough resources to upgrade these to tier 3. So I'm mostly now just worried about uh, what it'll do to my power if I go up. Um, so as soon as I uh, get this furnace up and running, uh, we'll get those upgraded to tier 3. I'm almost tempted to just... well, I am going to I am gonna turn the power off when we go to try and power up the nuclear... Uh, nuclear craft fusion reactor just because I might need all all my power on deck um, I can squeeze out like I can squeeze out like 90 some thousand um, RF per tick which hopefully is going to be enough to charge up and ignite uh, that that three connector um, bad boy that I've got brewing. So this radius here can be, um, with connectors, can be anywhere from I think zero connectors up to maybe like 24 or something. 
um, but obviously the bigger you get, the harder it is to get um, to uh, have outside power to charge the ring and then to get it to a temperature. Um, you have to get enough power to it fast enough to get it up to temperature that it ignites and starts a self-sustaining reaction. Um, but I think 90,000 per tick, uh, if I turn back on my, um, my uh, extreme reactor and have my um, have my gas turbines doing 60,000 this guy can do another 30,000 when I turn them on I just got them turned off because I don't need it right at the moment and I don't want to waste a bunch of uranium for no reason um, but that will give us 90,000 per tick one cool thing when I was playing with my wires I, uh, I did something that screwed things up and I actually cut off power to my ME network but the fact that I moved this California MRTG over to here as sort of backup power for the ME drive saved my bacon so I'm glad I did that and that's a note to myself to whenever I have an ME system in this kind of mod pack if I can slap something like a you know a, a just easy power source like in this RTG um, on my ME system as backup that's probably a good thing to do all right I'm babbling now and I'm sure I'm overrun time now but uh, that's where we're at that's where we're going uh, next time I'll uh, we'll get some deuterium set up and maybe we'll try to power that bad boy up by the end of the next episode talk to you later bye